J.R. Johansson is the author of young adult and adult thrillers, with books published in over a dozen languages. But up until a decade ago, J.R. never thought she could be an author. It was only when she started writing as a form of escape and therapy that she ended up with a complete first draft. Realizing that the process was both fun and cathartic, she kept writing and rewriting. J.R. credits much of her success to finding a critique group online, with an array of unique strengths to draw upon, all six went on to land agents. The rest, as they say, is history. To learn more about today's guest, her writing process, and giving yourself permission to write a bad first draft, be sure to listen to today's episode of the Fearless Storyteller Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Fearless Storyteller Podcast. I'm your host, Ethan Freckleton. Have you ever noticed how fear stops us from creating and sharing our best work? Join the Fearless Storyteller as we explore the heart and soul of writing stories, songs, and scripts that sell with the people who write them. Each guest has their own unique hero's journey and insights into the intersections between limiting beliefs and success. In exchange for your support on Patreon, you'll receive monthly one-on-one sessions with yours truly. I'm a certified master life coach, and I've worked with best-selling authors, award-winning filmmakers, and everything in between. Here's a testimonial from USA Today best-selling author Nick Thacker, as read by me. I have a lot of irons in the fire because I'm more than an author. I'm a creative. The only downside? It's easy to get overwhelmed and fall back into old patterns. Ethan's doing important work. When he offered to help me declutter and focus, I was all in. He helped me get clear about how to manage my capacity and to prioritize my cue. My business continues to move forward, but now I'm better at managing my energy and expectations, and that's helped immensely with the anxiety. If you need help laying the foundation of your author business so that you can get sustainable results without the overwhelm, I highly recommend his services. Thank you, Nick. Help fund the show today and get the support you need to take the next step forward on your own unique journey as a storyteller. Again, visit patreon.com forward slash Ethan Frackleton. All right, enough with that. On to today's show. J.R. Johansson, welcome to the Fearless Storyteller. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, for people who won't know who you are, what would you like to share about yourself? Um, I am an author. I have uh, let's see, six books out now. Um, I have a series um, called the Nightwalker series. Uh, the books in that series are Insomnia, Paranoia, and Mania. Um, that's a... a I guess, uh, supernatural psychological thriller is probably the best way to describe that series. And then the other three are kind of more, uh, contemporary thrillers. Um, Mm -hmm. they're, they're all YA. Um, the other three are, uh, cut me free, um, the row and the most recent one is to the bone Mm. that came out in 2020. Cool. Yeah. So you write books mm-hmm. and, you know, why? <laughs> that's, that's a My question most concise I ask myself a lot. Question, <laughs> most concise question yet. <laughs> why do I do this? <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I actually, when I started writing, gosh, it's been more than a decade now. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> that's crazy. I haven't really thought about that. <laughs> um, I, when I started writing, I, uh, I think I just kind of, I was going through a little bit of a, like a, a rough time, I guess, in my life. And mm. I, I was, uh, I had like a base, just some ideas in my head, the kind of a, some characters in my head. And I wrote, <clears throat> to get both to get them out of my head and to escape 
um, mm. from just a distraction from what was going on uh, in my life. And, mm. and I, I, I just wrote and wrote and I actually wrote a whole book. Like it wasn't, I, I never thought I could be a writer or an author. Like I, I didn't um, write with the intention of becoming an author. And my first book was terrible as mm. are many <laughs> first mm-hmm. books. Um, <clears throat> but I, I just kind of wrote as therapy in, in a way. And um, I, once I finished it, I was like, Hey, you know, um, that was kind of fun actually. Mm. <laughs> and I did what a lot of, I, I mean, a lot of, I think, I feel like there are writers who move on and write the next book and write, like they have several like practice books. Mm-hmm. And then there are writers like me that rewrite the same book over and over again as like their form of practice. Mm. Um, I feel like <clears throat> you, you have to, you know, get a lot of words on the page before you write any that are that good in generally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, um, so I uh, did that. Like I, I kept rewriting that first book over and over again mm. until I got, you know, better at the craft. Um, and then I kind of looked at the story and realized that it wasn't really all that unique. Um, it was, it was kind of trope and it, uh, was a story that had kind of been done time and time again, as far as there wasn't that much that stood out about it. And so Mm. I decided, okay, well, now that I've got the craft, um, a little bit more, um, honed in, I, I want to try starting with a story that's more interesting, more, Mm. more, uh, more about that. Uh, let's work on that aspect of things. So, um, I moved on and I started writing, um, insomnia, which, you know, that story is about a guy who, when he goes to sleep at night, he falls, um, he gets trapped in the dreams of the last person he made eye contact with. Mm. Um, and <laughs> it's killing him. He's kind of slowly dying of sleep deprivation. Uh, so it's a much more unique idea. Um, and that's, that's the one that got um, my agent and got uh, published. So yeah. I think I kind of slowly worked around on the, on the actual craft part, as I mentioned, and then, and then, you know, had to kind of figure out what a unique idea was uh, in order to kind of move on with my career. When you started that insomnia, it sounded like you had a really clear idea of like the central concept. And, and was that different than with, with when you just started writing the first time around? I mean, I had like an image in my, I, in my head more. It, it was cause I wasn't like writing a story. Like I was just writing like people and, mm-hmm. and like, like I had an, an image of like a girl out in the desert who like found this like thing that took her somewhere, you know, it was, it was essentially like a portal, which, you know, portals have been done, so, you know, and you can still do them in a unique way, but like, mm-hmm. you know, they've been done a million times. So, um, this was not a unique way. And, uh, but I feel like most of my, my ideas are fairly commercial. Um, mm. and I, I tend to be like some, some people start with a character and, and write around that character, I tend to start with like an idea or a plot and I write around that plot. I don't tend to figure out my characters until about halfway to three quarters through the story, Mm. through writing the book. Mm -hmm. And then I like really hone in on my characters. And that that usually means that I go back in my first or first uh, revision and, you know, write my characters uh, in the first you know, half of the book to match what I have in the last half Mm. of the book, you know, Mm -hmm. so that I, they have that full character arc. Um, uh, so that, 
I, I know who they are by the time that I finish, but sometimes they have changed. And, you know, I usually have a general idea of who I want them to be at the beginning, but like usually it changes, like some of them it will change. I'll be like, oh, you know, actually that's not who I want them to be. Um, that, that doesn't actually work very well with the story. Yeah. Um, and so I'll figure it out as I'm writing the book. Um, I have friends that, you know, do the whole, you know, pants, pants or, or whatever, um, writing by the seat of their pants, the whole idea, uh, with the plot. And I, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how they could do that. Yeah. Like, I, I, I have to know the plot, <laughs> yeah. but and yet you're flexible though with, you know, letting your character evolve and, and yeah, going back with that. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And like, do you find that your your characters like just kind of naturally want to be somebody else as you're going or is it like wait this isn't really creating enough tension and conflict or interest and so I'm going to change it um sometimes and most of the time it's that they want to be somebody else or they want to be they like they ha- they're very opinionated <laughs> um and they <laughs> They tend to, like, I, I had one character that just wanted to be, like, in the story a lot more than I had intended for them to be. Like, they just mm-hmm. kept showing up in every scene, and I was, and I, it, it, you know, worked out for the best because they're one of, like, you know, my readers, I hear from them that they're just one of their favorite characters. Yeah. Um, so it ends up, like... Uh, working out that they are very, very present in the story now, but they were not originally supposed to be. Yeah, um, I imagine so. they can hijack this, the story that way. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and my mom always laughs cause like I would call her and say, Oh my gosh, you would not believe what this character is doing. <laughs> She'll be like, you realize that you're writing the character, right? You realize you're creating this person. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I know, but like, I just didn't, I just didn't <laughs> expect this, um, <clears throat> because it's, it is. I mean, I know that I'm creating them, but it's also kind of like they take on a life of their own, obviously, um, as I feel like best, most like of the best characters do. Yeah, I think anybody who's who's done this at all for any length of time will. Will encounter that and relate to that. Yeah, yeah, but I think non-writers just think just think it's it's kind of a little bit um, uh, off the deep end of <laughs> when you say stuff like that. It might sound mystical, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, question about that writing that first book because you know a lot of people get hung up right mm-hmm. on that, or mm-hmm. they start writing and maybe yeah. they start rewriting, like. <laughs> How how were you measuring that you were improving or like what were you what were you doing? Was there was it just like this organic thing in a vacuum or were you interacting with other people? Like how did that work? Yeah, um, I was lucky enough. I uh, found a group of um, I think there were six. Yeah, there were six of us. Um, other writers um, online. Uh, we just met actually at the time like writer's blogs were really, really big online. Mm. And, um, we kind of met through blogs and we started reading each other's group, uh, other stuff. We, uh, formed a critique group essentially, mm-hmm. um, kind of very informally, like we didn't meet in any sort of way. We just started reading each other's stuff. Um, yeah. and I mean, it, it was uh, kind of oddly successful. I think five of well, all six of us ended up with agents. Five of the six of us ended up published. The one who didn't was mostly just because she um, she got, a, got kind of caught up in a bunch of legal stuff with an adoption uh, situation. So she just got very waylaid, but she's uh, actually more focused on it now than she had been before. So I'm sure she will be soon. But um, yeah. yeah, it's been kind of crazy. Like um, uh, Casey West, uh was one of them. She's got 12 books out now, I think. Like, it was just kind of uh, really lucky, I guess, in finding this particular group. Um, but we we all had very, very different strengths. Mm. Um, and so it was great because, like, Casey is very good with dialogue. Um, Renee Collins was one of them. She's really, really good with setting. Um, 
world building. Um, like everyone kind of had different strengths. And so like I, I would get some feedback on dialogue from Casey or get um, feedback on setting from Renee or, or, you know, various things. And I would like work on that particular part of my writing based on their feedback. Mm. And um, I felt like I was getting stronger with each revision based on the strengths of my critique partners. Um, so it was, it was really, um, I'm also very good at taking feedback. I think that's really important. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's really important to recognize <laughs> good feedback uh, from bad feedback. Cause not everything that you hear is going to be useful. Mm. Um, I think uh, if you aren't sure, like so I, I feel like innately you're going to hear things and you're, they're going to strike you and be like, yes, that sounds right. I totally see what they're saying. Mm. And I, I think I agree with this, you know, um, but there's also going to be things that, that somebody's going to say, and you're like, you know, I don't know, like maybe, uh, I mean, that might be right, but I'm not really sure. And I feel like in that regard, like I usually go with like the rule of three, if you heard the same thing from three mm -hmm. different people, mm -hmm. then they're probably right. Yeah. If you disagree with them, or if you're not sure that three different people tell you that same thing, then you probably need to like rethink your stance on it. Yeah. And, um, may and maybe if it's less, maybe it's just a matter of taste. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, Sometimes it's just a matter of taste. Some and, and if you feel strongly about it, then stick with your guns. But if three different people say it, then you really need to just like take a minute and, and think about it and like consider whether it might be just you um, taking a stance that maybe isn't that important yeah. and that might be incorrect um, and might be an area of growth that you have the opportunity to, to improve. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I feel like, I feel like it's really important to find ways to get feedback and there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, obviously right now in-person critique groups are not a good option. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh I feel like, you know, you, critique groups of any kind are always um, beneficial. Well, it sounds like, I mean, that's, it's amazing, really, that, that you just you know, kind of fell into or formed this group and you all ended up really at this high bar, you know, and, and I guess I'm, what I'm curious out of that is, was it during that process or when during that process did you maybe realized that you had some aspirations to do something with your, with your writing professionally? Um, I think after I, f so after I finished my first book was before I ever met any of these um, women. Mm. And I, I started like thinking, you know, what, what, how does, how does a person get published? How does one become an author? <laughs> like what, how does this whole thing work? <laughs> you know, so I started kind mm -hmm. of doing some research online and just kind of trying to, um, learn more about the profession and, and, um, just, uh, you know, I, I am kind of a person who gets a little bit, um, obsessed with things when I start to kind of, um, get excited about something. So I just dove in head first and just mm. did a lot of research and, um, looked up everything I could, uh, you know, and then, and then I was like, you know, why not try, you know, why not, mm. why not see what I can do? I, you know, I can put some time into it. And if not, like I really enjoyed writing this book, why not try you know, a little, put a little bit more time into it and see, see where this goes. And so, you know, I, and once I started, like what I figured out, which was really funny because I think it's kind of amazing. I finished the first book at all mm. because what I've discovered in my writing, you know, career here is that I hate writing. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> like the actual drafting process, I do not enjoy. Um, I am, a reviser. I love revising. Like I like taking my writing and polishing it and making it what I wanted it to be to begin with. But I don't like the initial draft. The initial drafting process is like 
painful <laughs> for mm-hmm. me. But I know eventually I get to revise, <laughs> but I have to get the first draft done <laughs> before I get to revise it. And so I, I've said in a lot of different, like, I have like a whole presentation that I have that I do at mm. conferences and stuff that's called like giving yourself permission to suck because <laughs> I hate my first draft. I always do. And about 20,000 words into every book, I want to quit. I want to throw that book in the garbage because I think Mm. it's terrible. Um, Because that's just my process. That's just how I feel while I'm drafting. I don't enjoy that part of the process. Um, But once I get through the drafting part, like, and I have to like understand that there's parts of that where I'm going to just think that it's a terrible book and I just have to push through it. Mm. And, and there's parts where I'm going to get stuck and it's going to, and I have to recognize the difference between not liking it because it's drafting and not liking it because I've gone wrong somewhere. Like I've taken a wrong path in the story and, 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 you know, I, that all of that just comes with practice and, and uh, you know, spending more time writing, but um, I have to keep going in mm. order to get to the end. The first 20,000 words, I'm okay. I get to 20,000 words and I hate the book. I get to about 40, 45,000 words and the 20,000 to 45,000 words is the worst for me. And then about the last 50 to 80,000 words pretty much flows. Mm. The the last part third of the book or so is is pretty pretty smooth for me cuz I know the ending and for thrillers like that's the exciting part, yeah. you know. So um that that tends to flow and it's usually the most fleshed out part of the book by cuz by then I know the characters. Mm-hmm. I I've got like I know the ending usually from the beginning but like I know most of the details by then. So that part is usually the best part of the book by the time I'm writing the draft, uh, that part of the draft. And then, um, and then I can go back. Cause then I'm excited. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I get to go back and revise now. <laughs> and that's just not like how everyone works, but that's how I work. And I know my process. I know that's how I work. And so mm-hmm. I just have to push myself through it in order to get to the part that I love. And, um, like, I feel like one of the biggest and most important parts of being a writer is getting to know your own, like, writing brain and understanding your own process. Mm. Because you have to know what parts you struggle with and what parts are just going to be harder for you in order to make yourself push past those and get to the parts that you love or else yeah. it, you can't... Um, you're just going to get stuck on the same parts over and over again. Yeah. Well, making this, I guess, more specific, right? Like, like maybe just taking an example of a time or not, but like you've probably figured out by now, like what concretely, like let's say you're having one of those days like that you hate it, right? Mm -hmm. Or you end it on a day and the next day you're coming in after you hated what you're doing. Like, how do you, how do you come back to the page? Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's a lot, a lot of it is just discipline. Um, like a lot of people think, you know, writing is like, oh, it's such a creative art. Like it, it is, but it's also just like dedication. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to be disciplined. You have to make yourself do things sometimes that you don't like to do. Mm-hmm. And, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I have writer's block. There is such a thing as writer's block, but there also is such a thing as just not wanting to do it. Mm-hmm. And you have to like recognize the difference. And sometimes for me, it's just a matter of making myself sit down and put my hands on the keyboard. And sometimes it's just the motion. Like I don't have to write words that matter or make sense for the mm. first little bit. Like I can just write words that are like, okay, so this person's in the room, <sighs> they're doing things. You know, they're going to walk across the room. Like there are words that I will probably toward the end of the session end up going back and erasing, but they're just like words that are like, okay, like there are things that are happening in the scene that, mm. that I'm moving forward with. And then I'm like, okay. And then it's like, I'm narrating 
more mm-hmm. than I'm like actually writing the book mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because I'm trying to get myself back into the story. Um, and sometimes that's what I have to do to just like get myself into my brain into the like, okay, my hands are on the keyboard. There's the whole like button chair, hands on keyboard or whatever it is. Um, it, it's just like the getting yourself back into that space so that your brain gets into mode. Um, of, okay, we're writing now. This is what we're doing. And that's what I have to do is like force myself to be like, okay, even if we don't want to, this is what we're doing now. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and, you know, there are days when I throw out half of the words that I'm writing, but I, that's, that's still half of the words that yeah. are going into that book. Um, so, uh, and, you know, I know that at the end of the day, even those half of those words might end up getting cut and replaced in the revision process, but then I'm revising and I like what I'm doing and that's okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's, it's still just getting to the, the, the end part in the first draft process. That is mm. my goal mm. because then I don't have to force myself because then I'm enjoying it. And it's the part of the book where I'm excited and every day is joy. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I guess it makes it easier if you have that perspective that right. As you say in your presentation that the first draft doesn't have to be good no like (laughs) like (laughs) i imagine like you know i can speak for myself and for people i've coached who are kind of at the beginning stage there's a ton of pressure on that first draft Uh and on those like for it to like all make sense and work the first time and i don't know if that's because you know we have this the mythology of the overnight success or the the first novel, all these breakout first novels. Like, you know, I wonder if people think they have to be great on their first novel or they failed because of all the quote unquote debut novels that are bestsellers. Yeah. It's a, such a myth too. Like, I mean, it's, I, and even, even the ones that, even the ones that we think that that's what happened, there are so many of them that that's just not what happened. Yeah. Like we get that idea, but that's it's really their seventeenth novel. Yeah. Uh, either their <laughs> either, either their first published, but their seventeenth that they've written, or it's their seventeenth that's published. It's just the first that we know about. You know, it's just like there are so few of them that it's actually their first first novel. Um, yeah. It, and many of them that I've actually met, that it's their first novel that they've written, their first novel that published, and it went big. A lot of them wish you wouldn't read it <laughs> <laughs> because they're like, it just is not, it's not what I'm capable of. I'm capable of so much more. And so many people are reading that book and I want them to read a different book. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I've heard that too. Like, that's not yeah. me. That's not me anymore. Yeah. 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 What an interesting thing to think about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so you so you get through that and you're improving your craft um and then you come up with this new idea, you find an agent. Like what's what's that like? Oh, um I mean, it's uh, well, I mean, getting my agent was so weird because um <laughs> she so I sent out a query. I sent I sent out a lot of queries and um well I think I sent out I think I had sent out 40 for this book oh. and um I think I sent out like 20 and I, I had se- several requests and I sent out like another 20 and my agent got it and I had I had several full requests out when she um uh requested the full and so I did what, what I always do did at that point when, when I, cause I, I had other full requests out. So I said, you know, sure. I'll send you the full, you know, cause I, I wasn't at home when she requested it. Mm-hmm. So, um, I said, uh, Oh wait, no, hold on. Let me, yeah, let, let me get that right. Okay. So I sent her the full and I sent her uh, along with it. Yeah. You know, thank you so much for requesting the full, um, just so you're aware, I do have other agents that have the full right now. So if I have, uh, any, um, updates uh, mm-hmm. on any movement with any of the other agents, I'll let you know. Mm-hmm. And 
she wrote back like almost immediately and said, oh, well, will you please send me also a five page synopsis then? Mm -hmm. But in that time, I had gone to my son's school um, for something. So I was at my son's school when I got that message. She was like, if you could just please send me a five page synopsis like ASAP. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Uh, sure. I'm just I I will send you one as soon as I get home. I'm just out at my son's school right now. Mm -hmm. And so I went home, got my after got my home, got my computer to go send it to her. And as I was getting on my computer to find the five page instead of like the three page or the one, like I had like so many different page limit synopsis um, to send uh, as I was trying to find the five page one to send her, she called me and offered. (laughs) So she literally had not read the synopsis. Definitely hadn't read the full manuscript. (laughs) Wow. So what did, like, did you, like, what was it? Why did, why was she in such a hurry? Like, what was it? I think she was just afraid somebody else was going to offer. But I was afraid she was going to hate the book. So, so she, she offered and I was like, I said, I, I thank you. Like, I, I am blown away right now. I would really like it if you would read the rest of the book (laughs) and then tell me if you still want to represent me. (laughs) Uh Um, So I said, why don't you take the weekend or however long, like a week or so, however long you need and let me know here. I'll send you the synopsis. Mm -hmm. Let me know if you still want to represent me and, (laughs) and uh, I'll let the other agents know or whatever. Um, and then, and then we'll talk. (laughs) She was like, okay, I'm sure I will, but okay. So she read it over the weekend and then called me on Monday and was like, yes, I still want to represent you. (laughs) I was like, okay, then yeah, (laughs) sure. So I I guess in your initial query, of course, you had like the, you know, the log line or the premise. Yeah. I had the whole query. So obviously it was pretty powerful. It was working for you. Yeah. It was, I mean, like I said, it was a a good like commercial hook and stuff. And she liked the writing in the first, I think she had like the first 50 pages. So it wasn't like it was just like the first five or something. Um, But it was still not the whole book. (laughs) Um. <clears throat> so I was, but yeah, I, and like I said, I was with that group of six, uh, mm-hmm. and of of those people, I, yeah, I'm the only one who is still with the their first agent. Mm. Mm. Um. So, uh, yeah, I've been with her for. Gosh, this will be 10 years this year. That's pretty cool. That is crazy. (laughs) So what is it about your, like, relationship, you know, or working together that, like, works for you? Um, she is, uh, she's very, I'm I'm with Kathleen Rochelle. She's with, um, Andrea Brown Literary, um, agency so she she was not at, she's actually got moved from she's moved to two different agencies uh, mm-hmm. while I've been with her um she was really really young uh uh she was fairly almost brand new agent when I signed with her I was one of her first clients um and she was very pat she's very passionate about um her clients she gets really excited Mm. she is she's editorial but she's not like she's not like in the minutia you know she's Mm -hmm. she doesn't try and like change my writing style but she does like give feedback on um you know overall like plot points if she feels like there's something that uh maybe goes awry mm-hmm. um, or that there's something that she thinks I missed. Um, so I usually do like one round with her before we go on submission. Um, originally we would do like two or three rounds when I was a newer writer, but now it's usually like one. Mm. Um, so like w- with newer writers, she does more with, you know, more established 
uh, writer. She does less. Uh, she has really good connections. Um, she she is she communicates with her authors the exact amount that they want. Mm. So like, um, I am a person who I want to know everything that's going on. So like, she has some authors that she's told me that they like they don't really want to know. Like when rejections come in, like mm-hmm. she she will say, you know, this is who we're still out with at, at some point when they ask for an update, she'll be like, this is who we're still out with. Whereas yeah. I want every rejection and I want it sent to me. Cause I want to know what the feedback is. Um, so like she sends me everything that we get. Mm. So I like that. I like that. She like, she feels like a partner, you know, it's a very open communication um, one point when she moved agencies, like she was really, really busy. She was doing a lot of stuff. And so there was, um, uh, I had some concerns. I brought them up to her. She immediately addressed them. Like she's just really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like those things are really, really important with an agent. Like they have to, the communication has to be there. They have to, you have to be on, on the same page with what you, um, see for your career. Like I, I have been, uh, I've taken a little bit of a step back lately because I'm, I have applied to grad school. Um, Mm. so, uh, I haven't been quite as active in writing, um, the last year or two. Um, and she's been totally fine with that. Um, so it's, she's, she's just really supportive of my goals and what I want to do. And that's really, really important in an agent. Hmm. Yeah. So what comes up for you? Like, I, you know, first of all, congratulations. It sounds like you have some enthusiasm for, you know, continuing to pursue (laughs) whatever (laughs) catches your fancy, you know, with uh, with the grad school, which you're welcome to talk more about or not. (laughs) Um, But I'm curious, like what came up for you when you're weighing that decision when you're, when you're having, you know, success, getting your books out there. Right. And I imagine there's some thinking about momentum or not. Uh, yeah. Um, I, there is some, uh, let's see. I, uh, I, yeah, so I I've always want I always wanted to go into psychology, mm. and my minor was in psychology. But when I, I went to college, um, th- my school didn't offer a major in psychology. Mm. Um, so I ended up majoring in communications and marketing, which actually has worked well for my career. Mm-hmm. Um, and my minor in psychology has been actually very beneficial in writing thrillers. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have always still wanted to do more schooling in psychology. Um, so, and I, and I still feel like both, I, I would like to have a career that worked hand in hand with my writing. Mm. Um, and so I decided to go back to school, um, to get a master's degree in clinical mental health counseling, Mm -hmm. um, which I think will both benefit my writing um, uh, in the mental health aspect. Like I feel like understanding your characters and especially when writing like thrillers and things like that, like it's really important to get into the head of uh, someone like when you're writing like an antagonist, that's like, um, I don't know, kind of mentally disturbed. Mm -hmm. Like some of them are in, in, in my stories, like, it, it, understanding some of the the psychoses that you might be dealing with, it, it can be very helpful. Um, yeah. And so I, uh, I felt felt like it would go very well together. And then when you're obviously a therapist, like you can you know manage your own schedule very well um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and kind of work around my writing career. And so um, and there's and then I you know with COVID I've been like at home. Yeah. <laughs> and there's and I did some research and there's a lot of really good programs where you can do the program completely online. That's great. Um, so yeah, I, I actually I accept was accepted to two different programs. So I'm just trying to decide oh, which one. Congratulations! Yeah, that's, that's exciting. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm really excited. During the time, you know, I'm married and 
you know, from the time I first met my wife to now, you know, she was a teacher and then she went into having her own therapy practice. She finished mm-hmm. her school and yeah, I think it's a great prof- profession and very insightful and, you know, and making this about authors and writing, right? Like this idea that, you know, there can be room for other things and other identities, right? And roles in our lives as we're writing books, you know, is something we maybe we don't talk a lot about. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think it's really, uh, I think it's healthy uh, for us to do other things. I've actually spent a lot of time uh, during COVID, like exploring different things. I, I did a, a podcast. I did a, um, I did a Twitch channel <laughs> for a little while. Like I just kind of did other creative things, um, yeah. as a like kind of mental health outlet in a way. Yeah. Um, I am used to traveling a lot and yes. I couldn't. <laughs> so I did different things and, uh, it was, uh, it was really interesting and really kind of um, a good exercise, I think, for me to, mm. to try different creative outlets. Um, I enjoyed it uh, in a way. I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, to go places now. I would like my vaccine, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. As many as us all, as we all do. <laughs> Definitely, as as, every, as the healthcare providers, as we record this, are getting. <laughs> Like yes. nailed and inundated with people making inquiries. Yes, yes. I'm just sitting patiently waiting. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, what did you learn about yourself like in this in this last year, you know, as far as it relates to your journey and your creativity and you know, making sure your needs are met? Um, I so I learned that I am definitely creative brain. I, w- I wasn't entirely sure really. Like I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a writer, but like, am I really like, am I really, what is it? Left brain, this creative side. Yeah. Um, uh, am I really like, <laughs> like, I, I still feel like I'm kind of analytical and I was like, no, no, I a hundred percent need creative outlets <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because like I, I find them <laughs> if, mm-hmm. if I, uh, if I'm not, um, actively writing as much. Um, and so I, I think that, um, and I feel like they are, they're still therapeutic to me. Um, Mm. even like, I, I felt like over the years, maybe writing became, um, less therapeutic and more of a job and mm-hmm. maybe more um, sometimes stressful because I, 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 I have also told people like you, if you, if you like to write, but you can do anything else and still be happy, do that thing mm-hmm. <laughs> because, because um, like writing can be a joy, but it doesn't have to be a profession mm-hmm. um, and you have to have a thick skin because it is literally your job to take criticism and to um, to um, be able to internalize it and use it. Mm-hmm. And it is also like part of the job that people will look at what you do and like post criticisms of it all over the internet. Like that is what, yeah. that is what they do. And so like, this is part, you have to have a thick skin. You have to be able to deal with criticism well and be able to take it in a useful way. Um, And so if you can be happy doing other things and, and if you don't, if you don't know how to take criticism well, like this is not the job for you. Yeah. Um, So, uh, you know, I, I've thought, you know, this is more of a job now and maybe it's less of a, like a therapy and less of a creative outlet. Um, <clears throat> and I feel like it still is that for me. I just have to think of it differently. Hmm. And and I feel like other creative outlets can also be therapeutic for me. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. And that I uh, I have I have friends that are very much extroverts. I have friends that are very much introverts. All writers. Um, 
And I am more of, I guess, an ambivert <laughs> where, mm. where like I can be happy doing either, yeah. but I can't be happy doing only one thing forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I can't, I know I need to, I need to like be able to, um, uh, socialize too. Like I can't just be stuck in my house forever. So I've, I've done what a lot of people have done and, you know, cr- created, you know, zoom, uh, gaming nights with some of my friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, um, like I said, I, I started a Twitch channel, um, which was really actually a lot of fun and I had a blast doing it. Yeah. Um, and it, it was really, it really did well, um, for a while, but now I'm like, okay, I need to get back to writing. <laughs> um, you did, you know, question, you know, thing that comes up, um, you know, personally for me and with other people I talk to, is, you know, what you're talking about, this outlet is like creative play, right? Uh-huh. And like, did you ever feel like you had to like have some benchmarks or outcomes from your creative play? Like, That's an interesting question. Um, I don't think I ever thought about it, but I feel like I probably did set some. <sighs> I'm thinking about the Twitch thing, right? Like where you get that feedback and, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I felt like I, I needed to like, um, have a, a goal mm. for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't feel like anybody else around me felt like I needed to, you know, like, I feel like they were just cool with, you know, thought it was fun or whatever, but like, I, I, um, so they, I don't know how familiar you, you are with Twitch, but like, um, mm-hmm you have just your normal, just Twitch channel that you just start. And then you have <clears throat> uh, what's called an affiliate channel where you reach a certain benchmark. You have to meet like five different kinds of goals um, and sustain them for over 30 days. <clears throat> and then you have the next step, which is called partner. And that's like ex- very few people reach partner. Um, mm-hmm. And that's like very established, um, but I ended up reaching affiliate status mm-hmm. in like, I don't know, just over a month, um, which is really fast. Like I knew a lot of people who had been doing it for over a year and didn't reach it. Um, so it was, it was really fun and really exciting. And like, mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, but like I worked hard to reach that status. So it like meant something to me. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then like I did like a launch party on Twitch because like it, and it was really successful. Like it went really well. Yeah. Um, so like, I, I felt like I, I needed to justify it and needed to mm. reach a goal. And then I needed to do something with it that made sense for my life <laughs> yeah. outside of COVID. Like I needed to have a launch party on it so that it made sense to my life before. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think I had to like make it all like, like make sense, but I don't think I actually thought it through. But I yeah. think somewhere like in my subconscious, like I, I had to make it all like fit together, like a puzzle. Yeah. Um, well, I wonder, you know, you know, part of the inquiry, I guess is, you know, it sounds like there's some past tense to this. Right. And yeah. And I wonder if part of that is, you know, linked to the fact that the goals did attach to it, right? And that need to to rationalize it or align it with the other things you're doing. Yeah, I think maybe um I think maybe that's true. I think I I I did uh you know meet those goals and then I mean part of it was that I uh I, I met those goals and then I also um knew the holidays hit and I I had surgery. Um, yeah. on both of my eyes, <laughs> mm. actually. So it made it really hard <laughs> to do any kind of Twitch streaming. Um, uh, so, I mean, like, not, like, bad. It was a kind of, like, LASIK, but not LASIK. Uh, yeah. A little more invasive. But, yeah, to fix my vision. Um, so, um, uh, but, uh, so I kind of had to stop for that reason. And now that I have the choice to go back to it, I'm like, uh, I probably should actually take that time and get back to writing. Um, 
<laughs> get back to the thing that I'm actually supposed to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel like, I feel like if I hadn't met those goals though, I probably would feel more motivated to go back to it. Mm. Um, and I think that because I accomplished the things that I had set out originally as things that I wanted to do, yeah. um, I feel like I don't have that need to go back anymore. Yeah. 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 So what's the, what's the creative play of 2021 going to be? Um, hopefully writing. (laughs) (laughs) Figuring out how to make the writing playful. How to make the writing. Uh, well, I actually, um, I started writing something that's completely different and foreign to me. It's just, it's just an outline so far, but it's a nonfiction. Um, Mm. uh, but it it actually goes along more with the, uh, it's like a, I guess with, with my grad school thing, it's, it's a, a divorced parenting book actually. Mm. Um, so I don't know if that's actually going to turn into an actual thing. Um, <laughs> but I, I started kind of outlining that, um, as something that I've never done before. Um, but I need to get back into, I'm excited to actually get back to the, one of my story ideas. Mm. Um, and then, you know, the grad school, Thing, which is less creative, but um, also a some goal. other needs. Perhaps. I'm excited. Yeah, it's something yeah. I'm, excited, I'm excited to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's 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 super cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, when you go back into like writing, you know, fiction, and you know, and leaning into that, like, like what goals are remaining for you? I have a lot of ideas and, um, I like, like many writers, I think, um, I have, I have a lot of them that I don't, um, I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to write. And some of them, I don't know how, I don't, I'm not sure if I can capture the way that I want to in writing. I would like to write a screenplay. And I wrote one. Uh, I wrote a script for a TV show with some of my friends, uh, uh, from some of my uh, writer friends from that original critique group, actually. Um, we wrote a script a pilot for a TV show, um, kind of on a whim, but also kind of seriously. Um, and it was really fun. We really enjoyed it. Um, I don't think it probably will go anywhere, but it was really fun. Uh, and that experience uh, made me really think it would be, there are some of my ideas that I think would actually play, I'm a very visual mm. um, writer, and I think some of them would actually play better, like, as a screenplay. So I think I may take one of my ideas and actually try to write it out um, as a screenplay. Um but other than that, I just have, I, I have ideas that are other genres. Like I, I really want to write a thriller for the adult market instead of YA. Mm-hmm. That's actually the one that I have started right now. I don't have a YA that's started yet, um, but I have um, an adult thriller that I have mm-hmm. actually started writing that's completely fully like plotted out and everything. Cool. Um, yeah. So that's probably my next project actually. Um and that's brand new uh, uh, market for me. So I'm kind of excited about that. Um, yeah. But then I need to write another YA. Yeah. Have too. you discussed that with your agent? Like I have. Yeah. I have. But it's been a little while. So and it's, it's interesting because... Well, what comes up in that conversation? You know, I'm sure a lot of people want to have that conversation you know, at some point. Yeah. Well, I think it depends on your agent because the... I thought she would say, okay, well, I, I can't help you with that, but I, I have some other agents that I know that I can recommend you to or something Mm. like that because she is currently at an agency that does only children's Mm. Andrea Brown only does children's They're They're one of the best agencies in the world for children's, but they only do children's. Mm. Um, but the agency she worked at before actually did quite a bit of, um, adult thrillers too. Um, so I, I assumed that she would probably try and say that, you know, she would kind of, 
because uh, I know some of the agents from her previous agency. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, you know, I've, I've actually met them at conferences and stuff. Um, so I assumed that she would probably try and help me, you know, have one of them represent, you know, one of those books if I wrote one. Um, but instead she said, well, I have connections there. So I'm, I think I could probably still represent it. So she said she would want to probably do it. Um, which surprised me, but that's, that's fine too. Um, super cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and she always like, she, she wants to do it if she can, she wants, she, she would rather me not have another agent. Um, uh, so that's great. Um, but I would also be fine if she was like, you know, I, I need to focus on my, on my, you know, kidlet clients. So, uh, I'm going to have Kevin Lyon from my old agency look over this book. You know, that would be fine. She's mm-hmm. Kevin is a great, uh, agent and I would be happy to work with her too. So either way, um, I would be happy. Uh, but m- what I, the ideal situation in that scenario is that my agent, if she doesn't, uh, want to take on a, an, a book that is not in her normal genre uh, would help me to get in a situation to have somebody else handle my book. That is mm-hmm. what you want. Um, I, um, my, my agent has, has had several books through me or other people that have been in, in genres that aren't necessarily hers, but she is very good at, like she used to organize um, a lot of like the agent um, like happy hours and get together. So she knows she has really good connections. Mm. And um, so she is very good at like um, reaching out and saying, okay, well um, I don't have um, some connections in this particular publishing house or this particular uh, genre, but I know people that do and they're going to help me. Um, and so she's, she's really good at like meeting the people that she needs to, or getting the connections or getting introductions that she Mm. needs to, to be able to get um, books seen the way that they need to be seen, which is what you need an agent for in the first place. Yeah. And so it sounds like looking out for somebody who has that personality that's naturally enlisting others. And yeah, the networking is super important. Uh, and your agent and really just looking out for you and what will work best for you, uh, you know, is, is what you want. Yeah. Well, cool. It sounds like you have a lot of exciting things ahead for you. Yeah. 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 I'm really excited. A lot of my career um, has been, uh, uh, I've done really well in foreign markets, hmm. um, specifically Spanish speaking for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. But like I, I was <laughs> I, last, I'm excited to get back into foreign markets is basically what I'm saying. I'd like to travel again. I was supposed mm-hmm. to go to Argentina mm-hmm. um, last year, but then that didn't work out, obviously. Um, yeah. uh, the year before that, I, I was the first American author to be brought um, by the U.S. government to the... Uh, embassy in let's say by the u.s embassy in uh paraguay hmm. uh to their fair uh, <clears throat> the uh, fair in this ascension um the international book fair hmm. um yeah so anyway it was that really sounds, really cool that sounds really exciting and cool <laughs> It yeah, was fun. really, really fun. I had, yeah. I had like a translator and, uh, I, I did presentations with both simultaneous and, um, uh, what's it called? The just normal translation where they translate like directly after you. Yeah. Um, uh, that's really weird. Uh, those <laughs> kinds of presentations because you, you say something and like, I rely heavily on a little bit of humor in my yeah. presentations and like, you have to wait for people to hear the joke uh-huh. and then hope that they laugh. <laughs> it's, it's a really strange. That thing, sounds really awkward if you're waiting for your punchline to work. It's, and it it's really strange. And like, you don't understand it when they <laughs> deliver the punchline and you're not sure if it's going to translate culturally. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a real, it's a real weird real weird vibe but i just i love the people um it's so fun like being able to travel to those um other Mm. countries and like i have really strong fan bases um 
so I, I went to Peru the year before that. Uh, Sweet. So it's been really, really great. And I really miss uh, traveling. So I really want to go um, uh, back. I really want to go to Argentina. That's probably my strongest fan base um, outside of the U.S. Um, Interesting. So I, I really can't wait. And I, I, I really want to get back to some kind of normal, like everyone. Yeah, I, I hear that. And <laughs> so thriller, thriller market and in South America, that's mm -hmm. th that might that might turn the wheels for some people listening. Yeah, yep. and I imagine your big. agent had a role in in that. Yeah, my uh, my foreign rights agent mm. uh, that works with my agent. Um, it, she did good, but also there's something called a um, literary scout that okay. works for foreign publishers and she got a hold of my very first manuscript and loved it and so she started selling it or, or like pushing it to her um clients who were foreign publishers hmm. so it sold in germany before it ever sold in the u.s yeah which yeah. is weird but yeah. Yeah. i guess germany is a pretty big traditional book buying market still. it is it is yeah. and thrillers are big over there yeah Thrillers are thrilling for anybody. <laughs> True. <gasps> and it's a good way to learn about each other, I think. Yeah. 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 Well, for people who want to know more about you, how can they do that? Um, they can go to, uh, let's see, uh, just www.jrjohansen.com. And, um, and that's Johansen that's, with two S's. Yes. J-O-H-A-N-S-S-O-N. <clears throat> that's probably the best you can find links to basically anywhere else you can find me there yep and i'll have a link in the show notes yeah yeah well jen thanks so much for being a part of the show thank you for having me this is really fun i hope you've enjoyed today's episode of the fearless storyteller as a reminder any and all links can be found in the show notes and if you're enjoying this podcast Will you please consider leaving a review? By doing so, you'll be helping new listeners discover the Fearless Storyteller podcast. <laughs>